Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, what a wonderful day and uh, weather. By the way, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Brother Phil. At work, uh, they call me Philip. Or I use Philip. And here's my wife. She's knowing me. A quick background is that uh, I also work for an American company, Capital One, if you've heard of it. I just, just mentioned because I saw a training room out there. So it's nice that we have uh, that kind of advocacy in this place. So praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone in uh, the virtual world. Hi there. Happy Lord's Day to all. And today, I'd like to share a message about what they call the most famous, famous sound. You know, the most famous sound. Yep. And it's found in Psalms chapter 23. We're going to deep dive in the entire chapter of Psalms chapter 23. This is what they say. Uh, we're going to do the, we're going to go through the verses later on. But this is what they say, the most famous psalm or the most memorized one. You know it? Even non-Christians know it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? So it is very famous, I think, because it has comforted a lot of people, uh, fixed broken hearts, um, wiped away some tears. Basically, it, this is a very comforting chapter. Psalms chapter 23. I've uh, read that some also call, uh, call this uh, the martyr's hymn. Because a while back, uh, martyrs has recited this psalm before they die. Um, so yeah, let's go through the verses and, and deep dive. To the, to the most famous psalm. Verse 1. Shall we read together? Psalms chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So the chapter itself preaches to us. It is giving us a very beautiful message already by just reading it. But we're going to go through each verses and see what David is trying to tell us. Remember, David, the psalmist, he has gone through depression. If you know the life of David... He was hunted by King Saul for eight years. Hid in the cave. He said he ate ashes. His tears ran over to his drink. If you don't uh, see, if, if you haven't seen, uh, I can say that David underwent depression. We all go through depression or problems or trials. I can say this is going to help us in in our faith, continuing with our uh, faith, being strong as we go through our trials and you know persecutions as Christians. So I'd like to divide the entire chapter just so we have uh, some sort of a flow in this one. Um, chapter, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3, we're going to imagine we're in the field. And then verse 4. We're going to go through a valley. And then verse 5 and 6, we're going to go to a home. All right. So in verse 1, it says, 
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And again, yes, everyone knows about this. Everyone says this. Everyone memorizes this verse. And we can see that in here, we can see a shepherd and a sheep relationship. A shepherd and a sheep. Keep in mind that David was once a shepherd. And he wrote in Psalms 23, he's comparing a shepherd to our God. Why is that? And also, the ship. Everyone knows who are the ship. We Christians are the ship. 200 times in the Bible, we were uh, described as a ship. We are Christians. In fact, in I, Isaiah also said we are a ship that went astray. So 200 times, we are called the ship. I just want to emphasize that being a ship, being compared to a ship, is not so nice. Who has pets here at home? Dogs, cats, uh, chicken. Uh, we have 12 cats. And cats are nice. They are lovely. They remove stress. Dogs are also great. Man's best friend. You can train them to sit, to eat at the right time, to go fetch. Dogs also are good animals. They can, uh, you can bring them or take them somewhere around 100 miles probably, and they can get home. They have amazing minds, shall I say. But how about a ship? A ship, if you, uh, in my study, uh, reading about a shepherd and a ship, a ship is what they kind of call uh, dumb. You cannot train them. Uh, you can't see a ship fetch something or sip. Well, I don't want to dwell on that dumb word, but we, we are uh, compared to a ship because a ship is dependent to a shepherd. And us, people, we are imperfect. We commit mistakes. And as we say, we are nothing without Christ. And that's what David is trying to tell us. A ship without a shepherd is nothing. We Christians without God is nothing. We cannot trust our own strength, our own knowledge. We are all dependent in the Lord. Do you agree? Therefore, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He's fully dependent. He has given, he has surrendered everything to the Lord. How about the second line? He said, I shall not want. The first line is easy to say that we have a Lord, we have a shepherd. But can we confidently say, I shall not want? Can we say, I am contented with what I have? We know that we live in a society wherein we are always uh, discontented. We always want more. Um, in politics, maybe, we can see some people, a lot of people, generally, not every one of them, takes advantage of poor people, takes advantage of money that they don't really own. Well, you know what I mean? Well, I shall not want, David said. I think what he's trying to tell us is that if you have the Lord, you don't need any materials. You don't need any other blessings. You just need the giver of the blessings. Imagine you are a first climber in a place somewhere. Let's say uh, in Baguio. You're a first climber in Baguio. And then you have a map. You have a guide. You have instructions or, of where to go. Would you rather prefer the map or a guide? We are more dwelt on the blessings, on the instructions, on what to do, on material things. Sometimes we fail to acknowledge where it comes from, the source of the blessings, the guide, or our shepherd, right? So sometimes it's easy to say we have a shepherd, but sometimes 
we lean on our own understanding. Sometimes we worry too much, forgetting that we have a provider. We have a protector. That is our shepherd. With that being said, David is telling us that we should be contented if we have a, a God. We should recognize, we should acknowledge that he can provide everything to us. We don't need any other material things. And we don't have to pray for any other blessings. We just have to keep in touch with the shepherd. So that's in verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verse 2, it says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Green pastures is a symbol or is a picture of abundance. For a ship, it's like a buffet. Imagine going to some yuk. Or only whatever, only rice, only chicken, only wings. That's how I can picture green pastures. It's like buffet for the sheep. Very green grass, wow. Unlimited green grass. Imagine how they feel. Very nice. And uh, speaking of green pastures, I'm reminded of our cat. Uh, we have a cat the fattest cat we have, and we call him Charizard. That's a Pokemon, but we call him that, an orange cat. So he's the only one that I can see that lies down in front of the food, lies down in front of the water, and I can see abundance. He's like, we're like lying down in a bed of roses. So you can see that God gives us green pastures. That's in verse 2, by the way. Let me read it again. ESV version. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Notice the word makes me. Sometimes we grind too much. We work too much. As if we, can, we don't consider anyone else. Anything else. We just want to work and work. And in those times that we are so tired that we don't notice. It says here, our Lord makes me lie down. He kind of says, relax. Don't be too hard on yourself. Have some rest. Have some rest with me. I am your God. You should not be. I can give you abundance. Just surrender everything to me. That's what the Lord is saying. I remember hearing that earlier in the Bible study. That's in Proverbs chapter 3. You should not lean on your own understanding. Right? So yeah. And then he says, he leads me beside still waters. Still waters is a picture of peace. Not washing waters. Imagine yourself resting at a stream with the calm water. Wow. So relaxing. Right? So we can have rest. We can have peace with our shepherd. So again, it's not about the blessings. It's about the giver of the blessings. It's not about the instructions. It's about our guide that we can be satisfied with him. And in verse 3, he says, He restores my soul. Restores my soul. I'm reminded of uh, a term they call, it's a cast ship. So... Of course, I kind of studied the shepherd, shepherd and a sheep relationship. In the Philippines, we're not so familiar, right? I know some shepherds, but they shepherd cows, carabaos, uh, but we, not, not much about sheep. So we don't have that kind of knowledge. But they say that there's this thing they call a uh, cast ship. That a ship sometimes goes astray. Um, out of this, out of sight of the shepherd, gets lost, gets hopeless, and sometimes dies alone. That cast ship is being trapped. There's a time that it's gonna lie down. For some reasons, it gets lied down on its back, and he by itself cannot stand up. He's gonna need the shepherd to save him. That cast ship is hopeless if the shepherd cannot find that ship. 
So that's a cast ship. And when the shepherd finds it, that's when the restoration comes in. It says here, he restores my soul. Sometimes we go astray, right? Sometimes uh, we worry too much and blame God for where we are right now. Sometimes we blame ourselves. But Psalms 23 said, our shepherd will restore our soul. Our Lord will restore us if we are uh, fading in our faith. Remember that we have God who can restore us. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Again, the shepherd is our guide. The shepherd is our protector. And if you go astray, he will restore us. Again, we should be contented with the source of the blessings. We should not look into the blessings, hope for anything, any new things, material things, because everything in this world is temporary. All we need is a shepherd. All we need is God. That's, that's the first part in the field. Now, we go to verse 4. And that's where we go through a valley. A valley is a metaphor of problems or a phase of our lives where we go through trials. A valley is a low place or a sunken part of the land. I know that. I live in Cagayan Valley. Uh, it was once the hottest place in the Philippines because of two mountains and then a low, uh, low ground. Sometimes uh, we use this, we go through a valley. If you go through a deep problem or a rock bottom situation, that's a valley. And we all have valleys, right? We all have problems. No one is excused when it comes to problems. And that's what David is also uh, trying to tell us. There are valleys in our lives. And in verse 4, he said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Just a little bit of uh, geography. The valley of the shadow of death is actually a real place. Uh, it's, it's a place in Jerusalem. There's a gate and then... Uh, they go out of the gate and then they go through the valley of the shadow of death. It's also called the Kidron Valley. It's where the graves are. So imagine a dark place and a scary place. We go through a dark place when we go through problems, trials. Sometimes uh, we get afraid. Sometimes we get hopeless when we go through a valley. I read about a story about a faithful Christian a missionary and then his wife. One day, that man, that missionary, was on a plane and the plane got hijacked. Have you watched that before? Uh, we, we see a lot of those in, in the movies, hijacked. So that man was able to manage to call his wife. That faithful man called his wife from the plane, says, Han, I am in the plane and we are being hijacked. They already killed some of us. We are in danger. We might also crash. We might all die, according to that faithful man. And you know what the wife said? How she responded? She said, Oh my God, we've been faithful all throughout our lives. We've done a lot of help. We've done a lot of works for the Lord. How could this happen to us, according to the wife? The lesson is, how do we respond when it comes to those situations? Are we going to worry and think about what we can do? Or look at the, what David said. I will fear no evil for you are with me. That's a great way of responding to this situation. 
instead of what have we done wrong instead of lord why is this happening to us we don't deserve this instead of that we can say i will fear no evil because god is in control i will fear no evil because i have a god who provides and who restores my soul how about that that when we go through trials remember it's not about you you cannot resolve your own problems but god can help you our shepherd can help us when we go through the valley of the shadow of death that's what david said your rod and your staff comfort me notice the word rod it's actually like a the 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 stick that the shepherd holds he uses it they say they use it for uh against the enemy like if there's a wolf that's going to try to attack the sheep that's the rod and then he also have a staff that's kind of being used to uh tend the ship or to guide the ship as to where they should go it kind of tells us that we need a weapon and we need the guide what is it it's the bible this is a a christian's weapon and this is a christian's guide to everything remember when we pray we talk to the lord when we read the bible lord answers to us that's why this is very important this study is very important because you know it's nice to meditate on the lord's on on these words that we can see not just read through them but meditate and analyze what is in the bible right so when we go through the valley of the shadow of death remember that we cannot resolve our problem but god can help us okay when we feel hopeless when we question ourselves remember that we have a shepherd that that is always with us so we can say i will fear no evil we will fear nothing those are just problems we have a bigger god so that's it for the valley now what's next we're going to go through a table or the home of the lord imagine yourself going through a long journey let's say you went camping out of town uh, mountaineering right it's kind of tiring uh, get dirty na um, and then travel far so that feeling is like this he went through a valley but after that look at verse 5 He said to the Lord, "You prepare a table for me. Ah, you prepare a table, me in the presence of my enemies." This pictures peace. That even though we have uh, undergone a path of enemies, path of problems, the Lord is there, at home, waiting for you, welcoming you, and ready to hug you. Imagine, uh, you went through a long journey. that feeling of hey i'm about to get home i'm about to see my family i'm about to lie on my bed it's exciting right so after the valley it's also exciting to know that god is waiting at home welcoming us it's by the way it says there you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows you are not anoint my head with oil this is a jewish tradition wherein if they have visitors they will anoint someone's head to refresh the visitor imagine walking through a you know hot place in middle east so that's kind of draining and that's kind of going to give us a sticky feeling and that oil has a fragrance that can refresh us But that's how it works. God wants us to be refreshed when we get home with him. And it says here, my cup overflows. My cup runs over. 
overflowing with blessings, with peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what's waiting for us after we go through the valley. So remember, if you go through a tunnel, a dark tunnel, and when you see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, this is what's waiting for us as long as we keep in touch with the Lord. We're going to have this kind of comfort. And here comes verse 6, another hymn. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. I'm sure uh, you've heard of that song. I'm not a good singer, so I'm not going to sing it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of the days of my life. That's how it goes. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. House in the Lord forever. Imagine. Just think of it, brothers and sisters, that we all go through trials. We all go through pain, heartbreaks, problems. But just, just imagine what is waiting at the end of the tunnel. It's the Lord's home. And it says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So just look forward to it. That at the end of our uh, endurance in this world, endurance, like we endure in our faith. We, we stand firm. Sometimes during Sundays, I feel, I feel weak. Hard to wake up, right? Uh, came from a long night, and it's hard to wake up. Sometimes it's yourself that's your enemy. You, you fight against your own self. Are you going to obey yourself to just sleep or obey the Lord and serve Him in Sundays? Endurance. You should, what did Jesus say? You should deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. That's what we need to do until the end. Because I memorized a, a verse in Tagalog, so I'm not going to say it. Uh, but it's a, it kind of says, those who endure till the end will be saved. That's in Matthew. So everyone, uh, if we go through problems, I'd, I'd like to encourage you, just like how David encouraged us. In Psalms chapter 23, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. That's how it says in uh, the New King James Version. And I, I have a final illustration to close this. Um, there was once an artist who was invited at a feast or a gathering. And then they have a minister there. So... According to the people, uh, what do you want me to, to say in front of you? Uh, according, to, according to the artist. And the people suggested, how about you say Psalms chapter 23? How about you recite it? We want to see you say those uh, words. And the artist said, sure, why not? As long as the minister goes after me. So the artist and the minister should recite Psalms 23. And there goes the artist. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A very beautiful delivery. Just imagine. I don't have a beautiful English, but maybe you can imagine uh, an artist saying that, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. So just imagine, imagine I said it in a very perfect way. And after that, the audience stood up and there's a round of applause. Wow. Very inspiring artist. Very beautiful words, diction, voice, and all. That's perfect, according to the people. Now it's the minister's turn. He kind of said it like in a convicting way that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's kind of like he can feel the words he's saying. And after that, audience did not stand up. Instead, tears fell down from their eyes. They got touched by that song. And then people ask, what's the difference? What's the difference between that delivery of the artist and that delivery of the 
minister. What's the difference? The artist said, we all know the song. We have memorized the song. But he, the minister, knows the shepherd. It's different if you recognize and acknowledge the power of God. It's different if you can feel how he helps you in times of trouble. Instead of just memorizing the, the words, how about we meditate on it? How about we appreciate the sovereignty of God? Now, I'd like you to reflect. How many problems have you solved with the Lord? How many times did you ignore him and yet you are surviving? How many times did we ignore our shepherd? But, but yet, he's still there. He's always with us. He remains faithful to us. He gives our needs every day. So it's time to give back, brothers and sisters, especially Sundays. Um, we give our full respect to the Lord. This is the time that we are going to uh, praise Him and glorify Him. So it's nice to you know prepare ourselves to meet Him in this place, in this chapel. Very nice. We all know the sound, but I hope today we know and we appreciate more about our God, about our shepherd. Wherever we are, he is with us. And it's not about the blessings. It's about the source of the blessings, who is the Lord. My prayer is after I leave this pulpit, every one of us here, and uh, wherever the people are, who are watching, wherever we all, are, uh, we all are, wherever we go, my prayer is that we, I hope we can all confidently and proudly say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 